What is going on trainers? Drum Villain here bringing you some more Pokemon Go PvP content and today we're taking a look at a Master League Classic team. Now, Master League Classic is probably, ironically, the most accessible cup to compete in in this current um, rotation of leagues because in the Open Master League you've got level 50 legendary Pokemon running around and in the Ultra Premier Cup you've got a lot of XL Pokemon like XL Stunfisk, XL Bomber Snow and Alone Ninetales running around. Whereas in the Master League Classic, no XL Pokemon at all are allowed. And the meta is still quite dense. It's still heavily dominated by Dialga and Melmetal and Mewtwo. So the meta is a lot more predictable in general. So I would say that it's the easiest cup to climb in this rotation out of Ultra Premier, Open Master League and Master League Classic. Or at least if you're not someone that has invested a lot of money in maxing out level 50 legendary Pokemon for Open Master League. So this team is consisting of Excadrill on lead. Excadrill is a great core breaker for a lot of teams. It threatens Dialga, it threatens Melmetal, it can threaten Charmers. And it's got very good coverage having Rock Slide and Drill Run. Um, the Drill Run will two-shot pretty much anything that doesn't resist it. With the exception of a couple of the really bulky boys like... Uh, Kyogre and Groudon. Um, it does very well in general in the meta and I've, it puts on a lot of pressure because it gets to those moves very fast having Mudshot as a fast move. We're pairing Jobber up with Mewtwo on the safe swap position. Mewtwo is probably one of the strongest safe swaps in the Master League. You can have a variety of charge moves. You really do want Psy Strike. It's very strong, very versatile and then whether you decide to have Shadow Ball which is another legacy move or you can have Ice Beam to threaten the Flyers like Lugia and Evelkel, or you can have Focus Blast to threaten the Steels. And Focus Blast also does a massive amount of damage to Evelkel. It doesn't quite one-shot, but it gets it very close, and they might not be expecting it, and it makes it an easier farm down if you still lose Switch to an Evelkel that might swap in against a Mewtwo. And then in the back, we've got Dialga. Dialga is just a very, very strong pick in general in the Master League. The Steel Dragon typing is just ridiculously strong. The Dragon Breath damage is oppressive. And we've got Draco Meteor on there for potential one-shotting things in the end game. Also, it's worth noting that the Dialga will have the best buddy boost equipped. It's very important to have that for the mirror match. It makes it a lot easier for you. It means that other best buddy 100% Dialgas aren't going to steamroll over you with boosted Dragon Breath damage. And don't forget guys to subscribe if you haven't already. A very small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed to the channel. It's free, just hit that button and you can always change your mind later if you decide that my content isn't for you. Now with all that said and done, let's jump into some battles. And in the first matchup we pull an Evelkel lead and this is a pretty good lead just because it does so well in general against our Mewtwo. So you want to stay in here, throw some rock slides, these will, these will do big damage, look at that, over 50%, so the second rock slide is going to threaten to KO. I think you can take a Dark Pulse, but we'd rather not have to um, at this early stage. If they're staying in with a Veltal, we feel like there's a reasonable chance that they're quite weak to Excadrill in the back. They might have a Dialga, or a Melmetal, or even a Charmer. But we decide to catch on Mewtwo, and this is a questionable choice. Well, we're either going to throw a Focus Blast, but we actually catch one. Good Lord, we are out here pulling some pro moves, catching a Focus Blast on Mewtwo. We're going to get to our own Focus Blast. Is this going to one-shot the Dialga that swapped in? No, they, 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 they dropped Shield. Okay, we can't have everything. We're catching the Focus Blast. That could have gone so badly. Um, I'd, I don't think you have to go ahead to try and catch a, um, a Focus Blast on your Mewtwo in general in that matchup. But it's worked out very well for us here in this matchup. We're going to be able to farm down this Dialga, especially since they threw Draco Meteor and lowered their attack. And now we can, we've can we got lots of energy built up. Let's see what they've got in the back. They swap, they bring in Eveltal and swap very fast into their Melmetal to catch a Rock Slide, which is very good play on their part. But we're still going to be able to make it to a Drill Run, which is going to do massive damage. It might even KO with the additional Rock Slide damage, not quite. And we, we haven't got any shields left, but we don't really need them at this point. The Eveltal's energy dry. We can just farm down this Melmetal now with our Dialga. And there's no way the Eveltal can get to another Focus Blast and take out our Dialga. But we're not going to risk it. We'll get to the Iron Head, throw it, get this thing out of here. Um, and that's going to be a GG. Absolutely bananas catch, catching a Focus Blast on the Mewtwo. 
Um, like I said, I don't think it's necessary, but I suppose they did bait us with a dart pulse and it was worth a try and it, it worked out. So jumping into the second match and we've got a Dialga lead. This is a brilliant lead for Excadrill because you outpace them to charge moves. Drill does so much damage. They're going to swap out into a Mewtwo and we swap out into Dialga to meet this Mewtwo and yeah, we, it was a little early to be a Focus Blast. So we decided we were not going to shield because if it's not Focus Blast, you can definitely take it, whatever it is, on Dialga. But the Shadow Ball does do good damage and now we're at risk of, well, we're in Psy Strike range, which is kind of scary, um, but we're also not super stressed about Switch Advantage. If the Mewtwo, yeah, I think we're going to let this go. And now we can just farm down this Mew. No, we are going to, oh, okay. We really do want Switch. Um, I would say in general, it's safe to let that go. Um, oh, no, well, it pays off because we get to the Draco, so we either get that shield back or we one-shot, and they're probably not inclined to shield. No, nope. absolutely. Smash to pieces, get out of that Dialga, and they've got a Giratina in the back, and it's got a shield advantage against Mewtwo and Excadrill, and this is, this is pretty bad news. A Shadow Ball won't quite one-shot an Excadrill, but it will get it very close to one-shotting because um, it just does... The, the Shadow Claws add up on top of it so much, they do so much extra damage. But two drill runs will be just short of K on a Giratina Origin. So it's a pretty even matchup in even standings. But we're a little afraid at this point we weren't sure if we could take the Shadow Ball. Um, but we're going to definitely be able to survive it. Um, even if they get the boost, I think at this point, if they threw an Ominous Wind, I think the drill run would still KO. It does about 45% of a Giratina Origins health usually. So yep. Yeah, takes it out we're going to take that win a little closer than maybe it felt like it was going to be at the start but a gg i was second guessing all my decisions in that game but apparently me in the zone knows better than i do afterwards talking about it and in this matchup we get a mewtwo lead and mewtwo is pretty intimidating as a lead either way because it gets to the side strikes at the same pace you get to the draw runs but mewtwo is going to win cmp tie you can survive one Psy Strike, Mewtwo can survive one drill run. We figured we'd try and catch a Psy Strike on our Mewtwo, and this is not, this has, that has not worked. We get absolutely annihilated by that Shadow Ball. We're just able to survive and get to a Psy Strike, so we're gonna at least get a shield out of this Mewtwo, but we just got absolutely wrecked by that. We're gonna bring in the Dialga, expecting the Mewtwo to throw straight away, and it is just a side strike. Still hits. Mewtwo is so, so strong in this uh, in this league. We're gonna go straight for the Draco, and if they shield it, we're gonna swap out to well, regardless of the shield or not, we're gonna swap out to Excadrill straight afterwards. So they let it go through, gets annihilated, and they've got a Zekrom in the back. And this is really good news for Excadrill because the draw runs are still super effective. It hits super hard, you see there. And the the dragon breath is resisted but excadrill is relatively squishy in master league so you see that it is chipping away at us but we can actually farm down that zekrom completely there and then we would have um we'd have two drones to throw at the mewtwo so that's going to be our win good game that's the good thing about excadrill it can just put so much work in against so many things in the meta it wrecks zekrom it wrecks lugia um although Lugia can put in some good work against the next Vigil over time. But in this match, we pull Melmetal on the lead. And you would think that this is a really, really, really good lead. And it kind of is, uh, because you've not got it lined up with your Dialga. But also, a superpower is going to hit really, really hard. Um, a strategy I've started doing later on with this team, I don't think I do it much in this video. But it's when, the, if the Melmetal builds up to nine Thundershocks, we swap to Mewtwo on the 9th and catch a superpower, which they're still going to have to swap out, and it just generally wastes some of that energy so you're not forced to either have your Excadrill get super low or use a shield early on in the game. Um, they bring in a Groudon, and obviously we're going to meet that with Mewtwo. We're going to put on a lot of pressure with these side strikes. If someone does swap in a Groudon against your Excadrill, you generally want to swap to your Mewtwo just because you can threaten so heavily with these side strikes. Um, the Dragon Tail damage is really adding up here. Um, I think we'll let this go, yeah, because if we shield, they're just going to farm us down anyway. We can't get another side Strike off. But now we've got two shields to their zero, and there's a good chance... Well, we know they've got Melmetal as well to meet our Dialga. We think this is just a Fire Punch? Yeah. The good thing about Dragon Tail Groudon is it's really strong in general, but it doesn't get to Earthquake very quickly at all. 
Now the opponent's going to bring in Lugia. Um, I guess they want to... Oh, we're just going to... Yeah, that makes sense. Nope, that did not make sense. Oh, it did, of course, because we can clear the debuff from the Draco Meteor. Yeah, what am I talking about? So now we're able to throw the Draco, do a lot of damage to Lugia, clear the debuff, and I think we're going to shield this. It's superpower, thank God. If that had been a rock side, it would have been a little scarier. Can we farm down? No! Okay. Um, maybe the play would have been to continue doing Dragon Breast on the Lugia, not throw the Draco right away. Um, and then throw the Draco once we were close enough to knocking out the Lugia, then swap to the Excadrill to possibly catch the superpower and clear the debuff. But you can't win them all. And in this match, we get another Dialga lead. And this fella swaps out into a Giratina Origin. And generally, you just want to bring in your Dialga. You don't want to bring Mewtwo into this thing. Um, Giratina Origin does very well against Mewtwo. And it does pretty, like I said, it's a pretty even matchup with Excadrill. But we want to keep Excadrill for their Dialga. So we definitely want to swap out. And like I said, if they shield the Iron Head, then we can shield. And as long as they don't get the boost on this Ominous Wind, then we can just farm down. And keep switch and have a bit of energy probably not enough to throw any moves especially if their dialga comes back in and farms us down but still keeping switch is the most important thing and also they don't get much farm because a draco meteor from a dialga will take out an excadrill excadrill just it's not very effective but it doesn't act like it's not very effective it will just absolutely annihilate you so i think we're going to shield this nope we let it go that was ballsy if that had been a draco we'd have been looking a little worse for where and they catch the draw run on a toga kiss which is really not good for us um we're quite low on excadrill now so even the charms will probably add up and would risk taking us out so we're gonna throw a side strike straight away on mewtwo see how much damage this does because with the draw run yeah even though the draw runs double resisted it does mean that with the side strike we can now farm down with psycho cut and now we just get to focus blast and absolutely end this dialga's whole existence bang time dragging you out of that one GG. So we're able to pull a cheeky 4-1 in that first set. And this is the team that I'm running in general, like day to day. I've been experimenting with other teams on and off in Open in open Master League and in Ultra Premier. But this is the team I'm running every day for my normal battles when I'm just trying to build back up the ELO a little bit that I have been losing from experimenting with other teams uh, to find things to bring you guys. Mainly just to avoid me getting like salty at the XL Pokemon I keep seeing in the other leagues right now. So this is a set from another day and we pull a Ho-Oh lead. And Ho-Oh is not a brilliant lead. Um, the Rock Slides do good damage against Ho-Oh but the Incinerates chip away so much. Um, so we figure we're going to swap Strad into Mewtwo and we'll probably shield this because yeah, it's a Brave Bird that would definitely have taken us out. Now we're going to swap out to there. Eveltal, and we're going to go for the Focus Blast. We should have, I think it was just before they got to their first Dark Pulse, and watch this. Bang! Look at all that damage that does. It's really nice for us. They do throw the Dark Pulse just before we get to a side Strike, and it's tempting to shield and throw that side Strike, but they're very close to two. We figure it's not worth it. We're going to bring in the Dialga and just take this Dark Pulse. It's not a not worth shielding. The ho is more threatening with its charge moves if it manages to get to them. But we are in a bit of a bad spot because we're down a shield. Although the ho is relatively low at this point. I think we're going to do the same as before. Get to the Draco. They throw an iron... Ah! That's really tough. We're going to have to shield this just to throw this Draco. Um, we need this energy not to go to waste. We've got some lag. That's always really uh, frustrating when you're very close to being KO'd. We do take out the Dialga. But now we've got no shields to two we need to get to three rock slides here to take this thing out there's no way we can flip this match back around we needed to uh, get that draco meteor off without having to shield our dialga and we might have had a this had been a much much closer match we might have just made it but we're not gonna be able to pull this one off it's a gg all the same um with a hollow lead in general i do recommend that you swap out i would say excadrill even though it's got the rock slide is the worst matchup out of the three pokemon on this team for Ho-Oh, because Dialga puts in a lot of work with Dragon Breath over time, and Mewtwo threatens still with that spabby side strike. So, another Melmetal lead. And what a lot of people don't realise with Melmetal is that Melmetal can take this draw run. It won't KO. It's a little bit bulkier than Dialga is, so that won't KO 
After they use a superpower, it'll get them really, really low. Um, but if we throw the draw run first, they can actually take it and don't have to chill if they don't want. But they're going to swap out to an Evelkal. And again, we're happy to see this here and not get it lined up with our Mewtwo. But it does threaten the Focus Blast. Yep, we get boomed. We get smashed to pieces. Um, that's not ideal. We're going to get to this Rock Slide before Evelkal gets to another move. This might not be enough to KO though. No, it's not quite enough. Um, it's really not looking good. We probably shouldn't shield this. We are going to shield it. That's, um, we're making some poor, poor calls here. I mean, with Focus Blast, you got to gamble. It's like Mewtwo, isn't it? You don't know if it's going to be Focus Blast. Um, but when it is, it sucks to see a Dialga get absolutely annihilated. And they've got a Kyogre in back. So losing Switch is really devastating for us, really. And we need the Mewtwo to deal with Kyogre. But we're shielded down at this point. So we're just going to have to go for the Focus Blast. Hope that they don't shield. I think, yeah. We're just going to hope that they decide that their Melmetal's not worth hanging on to. And just don't shield it. Then hopefully get to a Psy Strike against his Kyogre. Before it throws a Surf. Hopefully this is CMP tie as well. In which case we might be able to get to a Dura Run on Excadrill. And just take this thing out. It is a CMP tie. There is hope. If the Mud Shots and the Dura Run is just enough to KO the Kyogre at this point. Oh, super close. Is this going to be enough? I don't remember. I don't remember this match. It is just enough. We take the win. GG. Man, I'm out here recording battles and I'm on the edge of my seat because I don't even remember some of these matchups and whether or not we pull them off. So up against Jazzy LeBron and they've got a ho lead again. So we're after redemption. Can we flip this matchup around and take a win against a ho lead? And the interesting thing is there's a lot of ho- Oh, they sneak and incinerate through when we throw. That's really bad. We expected to be CMP time with them there, but they get an extra one through before they swap out. So they've got a lot of energy stored on that hollow, which is really, really not good for us. We're going to go straight for the Focus Blast here. Um, they, we do get a shield out of them, which, yeah, it kind of sucks because they get enough energy where they're going to be able to threaten our Excadrill. They're going to get that shield back from us. And that ho -Ho getting that extra Incinerate, any Pokemon that's using Incinerate is just really bad news if they sneak one through because it's so much free energy and damage that they get off. I'm going to throw the Dura Run, take out the Dialga. We're still up a shield, and I think we're going to let this go, yeah. We're going to let this go through, and we're going to put everything on Dialga with two shields. Let's see what they got in back. It's a Mewtwo. So, this could work out for us. We, uh, I think we're CMP tied there, which is quite unfortunate. I don't think this is a, yeah. We don't shield. We figure it's going to be a size strike. And if we shield that up, and then they end up getting to a Focus Blast or something, that's much, much worse for us. We figure we can let that go through. And now we're going to commit two shields, farm down this Mewtwo, and then throw a move at the ho -Oh. That's the play. Um, it's going to be close. This Mewtwo is going to be... We're going to get to another side Strike, and we can shield this. This is fine, and hopefully we can just take it out. Yep. I think that's pretty close, though, that match. We get to the Draco. We're not here to mess about. We're not here to gamble with Iron Head not quite being enough. And we're going to take out this ho -Oh, and we're going to take the win. GG. Honestly, when I thought when that hollow snuck the incinerate through, I thought I'd screwed that match up. I was convinced that I'd thrown it away because that much damage and energy really goes a long way in the Master League. Now, here's one that you don't see a whole lot of in the Master League Classic, or at least I don't see many of these, and that's Theory and Form Landorus. And we we really don't like to see this thing because if it's running superpower, I think it can also run Earthquake um, to threaten the steals instead of superpower if they don't want to debuff themselves. But most of them will be running Superpower and Stone Edge. And that Superpower, um, Excadrill cannot take that Superpower. It can survive one from Melmetal, just, but it cannot survive one from Landorus. It will just absolutely annihilate. We decided to swap to Dialga because they've already thrown a Superpower. So we figure they might be tempted. They've kind of got to swap out at this point because they're too debuffed. Um, and we're going to get ahead on Energy and see if we can threaten what's in back. Get an energy advantage potentially on Mewtwo for endgame to take out that Landorus. So we use our last shield on Dialga because we want to get a move off on this Mewtwo. Um, we could have thrown the Draco, but really we um, that would give the Mewtwo the option to potentially build up a lot of energy or farm down before um, we take them out. But well, they're going to throw another move here, which is great for us. We don't mind this. Um, now we're going to come in with Excadrill. 
The Mewtwo's got a lot of energy, but it's going to absorb this. And then we're going to swap in our Mewtwo, I think? No. Okay, we're just going to make it to a draw run. That's fine too. Take out the Mewtwo. Then swap into our Mewtwo straight away. And they've got a Zekrom in back. So Excadrill would have been really nice earlier on. This is probably going to be a Wild Charge or a Crunch. It's going to take us out. This is going to be their game. It's going to be a GG. And um, we really should have just brought Mewtwo into their Mewtwo to farm it down, get ahead on energy, and then save that bit of energy we had on our Excadrill to hopefully get a draw run off on something with a bit more health. But you, you live and learn. Now this is the Nightmare lead. Um, Kyogre is probably the single worst Pokemon you can see on lead if you're running Excadrill on lead. We're going to swap to Mewtwo naturally as it's our safe swap. We'll build up to the Focus Blast and throw a Psy Strike. We're hoping that they shield this, and they do. That's really nice for us. And we're going to build up to a Focus Blast, I think, and throw it this time. Pretty sure. Yeah, because we can't get to... We could have put on two Psy Strikes, I suppose, but then they... I don't know. So it's nice to go for the one shot. We don't get it. So now we've got a shield advantage, but we, uh, we've we lost Switch, which means that Kyogre's gonna be able to get onto our Excadrill. We do shield a Draco, which is nice, I guess, because it means we get to build up a lot of energy on Excadrill um, because the Dragon Breaths are so severely reduced in damage at this point. Build up a lot of energy. We're gonna have another Drill Run ready to throw at the Kyogre straight away. We're gonna throw one Mud Shot with first because you can do that because it's a two turn fast move compared to a three turn fast move from the waterfall from Kyogre there's good damage just shy of half and we're gonna bring in Dialga and they've got a Dragonite in the back so there's a win con here because with draw run it takes two to KO a Kyogre plus a bit of extra damage in between like I said it's about 45 percent of the health it does ish so we take out this Dragonite and then we're gonna put a lot of work in on this Kyogre but we need to not get farmed down if we get farmed down it's all over and this Kyogre is getting close but we're going to get to the Iron Head it's going to be enough to take out the Kyogre and we're going to be able to take the win but that match was close because if we'd have been farmed down they'd have thrown the Surf and taken out Excadrill Drill straight away good game being able to flip around a Kyogre lead and take the win to give us a 3-2 in that set's really nice winning when you lose um, lead is always really really satisfying now, these two sets that I showed you guys today weren't back-to-back -back sets, um, just because I wanted to give you guys a variance of leads to show you. Um, and there's a lot of time you just see Dialgas and Melmetals, the same things, over and over again on lead. I want to show you guys a few different things as best as I could in two different sets. And one notable lead that I didn't mention is Giratina Origin. If you get a Giratina Origin, stay in and just throw draw runs and do what you can and then farm down with Dialga afterwards if they try and bait you with ominous wind and you don't shield you can actually flip that match up and take it in the zero shield i believe um, it's very close but with that i'm going to leave you guys with this i only want to bring you guys two sets today i didn't want to give you too long of a video this time around wanted to keep it a little shorter and sweeter i'm gonna leave you guys with this matchup which is a very very close photo finish of a game and as always guys don't forget to subscribe if you're already subscribed you're an absolute legend and i will catch you all next time